This is surreal. <laughs> I'm going to share a little bit about my journey with you all so you know why I believe, I feel that this is surreal, standing up here. In 2010, I reported $10,000 as my family household income to FAFSA. That's approximately three times below the federal poverty level for a family household of five. I even went to, to college my freshman year without a laptop and without a phone. The statistics and stigmas associated with that were not lost on me though, but I beat those odds and now I'm here. <laughs> Maria Anzaldúa, a feminist Chicana theorist, writes about a place called the Borderlands. She describes them as a place of physical tension where you're in limbo, not belonging to any particular land, you're in between spaces. She also describes another place called Nepantla. That's more of an emotional limbo, an uncomfortable feeling of belonging neither here nor there. Growing up, I lived in a place with no solid ground. I moved schools yearly because we switched apartments yearly. I struggled with my Mexican-American identity. You see, they called me too white for my intelligence and my accent, and in the same breath also called me other racial slurs for my skin color and my ability to speak Spanish. These were my borderlands. I struggled with wanting to be a first-generation college student versus staying home to work and pay bills for, for my mom. Oh, how expensive poverty can be. And so I can't explain to you all how exhausted my legs have felt just having to balance myself on eggshells, but on this broken glass that I've walked, I found myself and I uncovered a gem. And I thank my village for that. My high school mentor, Mr. Gordon, is a part of that village. He introduced me to Golden Apple. He said, go into the library one Friday morning and apply for this scholarship because, quote, it had my name written all over it and I could still hear him saying it, still to this day. And so I applied, I got interviewed, and sure enough, I became a Golden Apple Scholar in 2010. Thank you. And what followed was amazing. Golden Apple Scholar Institutes truly forced me out of my shell professionally and personally. I made lifelong friends and colleagues, and I was afforded opportunities that I always dreamt of but never thought were tangible. Golden Apple truly helped me become a highly effective math teacher, a culturally competent leader, and a systems thinker. And it didn't stop there. Golden Apple showed me how my knowledge and my impact can transcend the walls of my classrooms. Being a liaison and a reflective leader for SI, Scholar Institutes, and being a mentee to some great Golden Apple mentors gave me this perspective. They believed in me before I believed in myself. And during this pandemic, where teachers have been asked to do the impossible, right? My, Even in the midst of all that, my Golden Apple community was there to support me. When COVID shut down schools in the spring of 2020, my Golden Apple colleagues from all across the state helped me unpack this thing we call asynchronous teaching <laughs> and simultaneous instruction. <laughs> you know, teaching in two places at the exact same time. Golden Apple helped me beat the odds then, just as I know they're helping you beat the odds now. Today, I'm a nationally board certified teacher, a PhD candidate. <laughs> Thank you. And a network leader for Chicago Public Schools supporting 31 schools, 57 administrators, hundreds of teachers, and 10,000 students. And so I'm no James Baldwin, Glory Latson Billings, Rochelle Gutierrez, Goldie Muhammad, who's a Golden Apple Scholar, um, or Zaretta Hammond. I'm just an ordinary person who had a village behind him and who happened to uncover a gem in broken glass. So thank you, Golden Apple. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. And thank you to my partner, Heather, I think she's watching, uh, for pushing me to go through with this and for believing in me. Lastly, thank you to my mother who 
raised me and my siblings by herself under all of those circumstances. And so I do urge you to pick up your phone, look at the QR code, make an investment, and tell your friends about us, right? I strongly urge every single educational stakeholder in this room to help us uncover these gems with love and patience and an investment. Um, <laughs> because even through fire and pressure can we find diamonds. Thank you.